Alright, so we're at 95% on our first straw pickup. Shouldn't be too much longer. It'll be full, and we'll show you where the straw sale point is. It's taken a little while. We've gone across the field several times. I figure you want to be bored with that, so. Almost there. I think this holds 44,000 total. Level. About 100%. So let's run this over to the farm and unload our first load of straw. Sell it. See how much we can get for. Things are going pretty good still on the harvests. Farm seems like a million miles away. You're born in real time and doing it yourself. Maybe we'll get enough money here with all the straw buy our first pickup. That way we can get around the map a little quicker. Alright, so what we'll do, uh, instead of backing in, we'll just pull through like the uh, trailers unloading we do. Just pull up to the straw bales. trigger. Maybe. Need to pull ahead a little bit further, maybe. There we are. Let's say we're at 19.6 right now, so see how much we get for 44,000 liters of straw. Be too bad. We're already past five thousand, six thousand, seven, just over seven thousand dollars for one load. So let's go back up to the field. We can just cut across the sheep meadow here. <clears throat> and I guess before we actually get a pickup, probably we ought to get a swather, cut some grass, before we can start getting some sheep. And I guess we can take some straw up to the cow farm just to test that out. Might not need that right now, but let's see where we left off over here. Right back 
here. I guess we were already in the second gear, so let's get lined up and pick up some more straw. I'm not a perfectionist. I'm not. Uh, I don't have OCD, so I don't have to feel like I pick up every little bit. Let's get as much as possible. Better double check to make sure everybody's doing alright on the harvest. Looks like the boots is doing fine. Getting cut off pretty quick. The far. Doing just fine. Alright, won't take them too much longer on that, so let's get back to picking up some straw. Once we get all that wheat cut off, we'll uh, see how much we brought in. some wheat to get our swather to cut grass and get a pickup at the same time. If we get the pickup and the swather, we can pull the swather back with the pickup hopefully. Once we get all of our basic equipment lined up for what we need to do, then we can worry about upgrading, upgrading combines, tractors, and other equipment. But I do like this Schluter. Got a lot of power. We'll probably end up making this our field tractor for cultivating. I think, it, I think this one's like a 240 horse tractor, so we're pretty good cultivator with it.
Yeah, we never had a forage wagon like this on our farm growing up. Um, when we did forage, we had basically what we called a cutter, a corn cutter. And I think that also had an Alice Chalmers cutter that had a real pickup on it. So you could pick up uh, hay or anything that had been swathed or mown down in the windrows. And he didn't he used it when I was real little, but uh, we ended up having to sell cattle off one year when I was pretty young, so we had our hay catch on fire. We had a whole bunch of round bales caught fire. So we sold off a herd of beef cattle and ended up having just handfuls of cattle here and there off and on. After that, we never had a, we never had a good sizable herd after that fire. raise uh, bottle calves. That's one thing I used to hate in the middle of winter time, trying to get up before school. It's still halfway dark outside. Trying to bottle feed calves in the snow and wind and ice. Cold rain, freezing rain. Standing out there at 6 in the morning. Freezing your, you know, wets off. Raised his cattle off and on. I still remember when I was real little, we used to brand and dehorn the cows. I used to feel so bad for them when I was a kid. I was real small. And he raised Herefords mainly when I was growing up, when I was really young. Later on, we ended up uh, raising some Holstein steers. We raised chickens, uh, not every year, but some years his dad would end up uh, buying about 50 chicks. And the funny thing is they'd come in the mail, delivered in boxes. Each bo the box would have um, little compartments for each chick. And we'd wait for those in the mail, we'd set up a, oh, basically a wooden box in the chicken house. Two by twelves, I believe. Make a big square box on the ground full of straw. Put the feeders in there and the water, water uh, tanks. And then he would mount from the ceiling of the chicken house. He would mount uh, a, a square piece of plywood and lower it down and hang it from wires, like bailing wire, from the roof down low enough to the wooden box that he had created for the chicks and put a heat lamp, to keep them warm in the springtime. So we'd raise about 50 chickens. Chickens and roosters, well, every few years, we didn't do it every year, some years we do it consecutively, some years we wouldn't. So one year we had uh, our 50 chickens, and our uh, dog ended up getting into the chicken house and killed 49 out of 50 chickens. He was a white dog, he was a German Shepherd mix, he was all white, his name was Duke. And, uh, Went out there and found a massacre. There was chickens everywhere, feathers and blood. And uh, he came walking around, and looking all innocent. But what gave him away was the feathers and blood around his white fur on, on his mouth. So, needless to say, he didn't get to stick around very long. Once they get, once they get the taste of blood, they're ruined. So we ended up having one rooster left over out of those 50. And we named him Roy. We just kept him. We didn't butcher him. We kept him. And I remember my, my room was on the second floor. And in the late spring, early summer, you know, I have the window open for the fresh air. But every morning, old Roy, he would uh, roost on the air conditioning unit down below my window on the ground level. And every morning, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning, depending. He would crow and crow and crow. So I ended up keeping a pitcher of water next to my bed on the nightstand, right next to the open window. So every time he would wake up in the morning and start crowing, I would just have that pitcher of water sit next to the bed and just toss it through the screen on the window and it would go straight down and hit him, knock him out of the way. He would, you know, make a fuss and he'd run off and he'd be back in an hour. Stupid rooster. I think the roosters in this game are annoying, man, in real life. I'll tell you. So we kept him as a pet. 
since he was the lone survivor of the Great Chicken Massacre. Old Roy the Rooster. This does take a while, and it is kind of boring. But uh, if we want to make some money off this straw, we got to get it picked up, so. Doing what we got to do. Eventually, I'll end up getting these fields set up with horses so that we can actually do the wind rowing and uh, picking up worst place we don't do we'll have so many other things going on with the animals once we get those all started we'll have a lot of stuff we'll have tons of stuff to do I like how the uh, rows on the far are so close together looking up like a row and a half so, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish this row up I'm gonna go ahead and run this up to the cow farm just to see if we can and where we would dump it we'll in the episode once we figure that out. Kind of guessing that we won't be able to dump any straw up there since we don't own it. So I think we'll go cross country and kind of see countryside a little bit. Alright, so let's put it in third gear and let's cut across this canola field. Head up toward the cow farm. We're heading to the north. We're going to do this in an unfarmerly way, cutting across our growing crops just to save time. There is, yeah, I think straight ahead is the McGregor farm up to the north. You can see the barn in the distance. Some silos. When we get closer, it'll come into more detail, more focus. So pretty large coal field here, also. I think the cornfield still continues all the way up this way. Cornfield's going to take forever. We only have one corn header for the boots uh, combine. Now we can go and find a the mods. We can go find a corn header for the far. You can use basically any header on almost any combine. I do have a small one in there. I think it's for the John Deere 2058 combine. We can use that on the far. It looks a little bit big, but the smallest one I got. So. Go through the waterway, crashing through the waterway, and across the fence and across the pasture. See, so yeah, we own this pasture too, I think. We've got tons of grass. We can make tons of bales and sell them. set up a course, uh, set up some field clip. Now we don't own this one. There's a cell sign right there. But look at how many bales we can pull out of this. Definitely going to have to use course plate on this map once we start getting a lot of area. Just way too much area to do for one person doing their job. Of course the series could last for five years. <laughs> Before we get through the three cycles. Right. And it's probably a good mile up to this farm from the federal farm. So this map is a four times map, so the distances here are a long way apart. Where the driveway is on this farm. Kind of up on a hill. This way too you get to see the cow farm up here. I think we take the straw into the big red barn. I'm not real sure. side cut through this ditch at an angle. 
Yep. Maybe the rat was down here. We're not even far enough north to hit the interstate yet. We're still on the country roads, a mile away from our main farm. That up ahead would be the cook farm. Would be where we raise our chickens at some point. This is a great multiplier map. We have um, several people set up on separate farms, growing different crops and raising different animals. Right, this is a driveway to the farm. Maybe just go up the hill. There's our barn. Oh, there's our silos up ahead for uh, silage. Let's slow down in case this fence does not drive through. Let's check. Is it solid or is it drive through? It is drive through, thank goodness. Alright, so we may have to go into the barn. We'll soon find out. Let's go around here. Yeah, we dump our straw inside the barn here. So we can we can raise cows without buying the whole farm. So that's good to know. So let's pull out of here. There's some other silos up here too, probably for crop stores, just like the other farm. Let's go check out the silos. Alright, so we're full up on straw until we buy some more cattle. Let's see here. What else we got here? We got the cabin barns, cabin sheds here for the small calves. Let's go check out what other silos we have here. Are the gates open? Or we just drive through them? Drive through. Okay. So there's our manure pit. So if we do greenhouses at some point, we'll have to do our greenhouses up here close. We can actually do them in the grass field to the right. So up here, we have a dumping spot there. We have corn, probably just standard crops up here also. standard crops in this game, or in this map. There's our liquid manure tank. And looks like we have two silage pits here. And do we have another straw cell point right over here next to the silo? Let's go over there and check that out. Might be able to sell this straw off here and end the episode up here. We've got two fuel tanks. 
Probably have seeds and fertilizer inside that shed. This should be a sell point, I'm guessing. Yes, so we can sell our straw up here also. Or close, we buy any fields up close. Well, good, that makes the trip worthwhile. We got straw in for the cattle and we got to sell the rest, so. Some other buildings over there. I'm gonna guess that we have um, seed and fertilizer in this shed. There's fertilizer straight ahead. I'm looking right at it. Didn't even realize it. And uh, oh, we got a workbench. We have seeds in here somewhere. Yeah, seeds right next to fertilizer. Yeah, so this is a bigger farm up here. We'll have to get in some cattle and get some machinery up here. All right, we will talk to you later. Take care.